Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com, and I have a very, very special show and tell for this week. Uh, Jeremy Williams, a great friend of Tested, is in, and you've actually brought some things to show off. Um, I went over to your house a couple weeks ago, and I haven't been there in a long time. I forgot what a big pinball nut you are. Yeah. Uh, you love pinball. Why is that? <laughs> Why don't you? Uh, I have always liked pinball. There's something about the physics of it, the mechanics of it, that is real that the game can be different day to day based on the humidity or it's just interacting with something that's physical has always been fun and, and when I finally was able to afford a pinball machine I went ahead and did that. I thought it'd be one pinball machine. And now you have five. Yes, now I have five. <laughs> they multiply like gremlins. And so you said, you told me that there's a growing community of pinball enthusiasts. It's, it's really a vibrant community. Oh my gosh, yes. And I'm sure some of your viewers know that. I mean it's, it's blowing up. So <laughs> what, what's your favorite pinball machine? Right now, Whitewater, I would say. I don't even know what that is. I would just say Star Trek. That Star, was Trek one, that was Star Trek's the, fantastic. Star Trek Next Generation. That was my first game. Yeah. It's a fantastic game. Um, so something that you've noticed in the community is that people yeah. refurbish their old pinball machines because yeah. not many companies are making new ones now. Right. And the components of a pinball machine, obviously you have the, the frame, the chassis, but the most important thing probably is the field, the play field. Yeah, they call it play field. Play field. I, I didn't yeah. even know what that, that phrase was. And we have one behind us. Uh, this is your, one of your play fields. This is a new one. Yeah, this is a monster bash. Yeah, let's, let's bring it up. And this is basically, if you took apart a pinball machine, this is where the ball would roll. And this yep. would be flat and horizontal. And what do people do with these play fields, like the old ones? Well, they would disassemble the entire game, which takes a day. And then they would take the old play field out. And they might refurbish it, and they might send it off to get you know filled in with fix all the wood holes that are mm -hmm. missing, and then they'd have it re-clear coated. They put this automobile clear coat on it, and then they might put it back in. But a lot of times now that people are actually remaking playfields, which is incredible because you have to you know CNC route all these holes, you have to find all the colored inserts and screen the artwork and all this. So work. screen all the art. Yeah, which which is an immense amount of work. But people are doing that now, so people are just taking the old playfields out and they're hanging them up on the wall. And they're buying new ones to replace the old. So it's ones a piece of art now. Yeah, it's you know Americana. It's it's beautiful pinball art. People who like pinball, they like to decorate their game rooms with pinball. That's something you associate with pinball. In addition to the art on the play field, is also the lights. And you mentioned the yep. colored inserts. Yep. Now when you hang this up on a wall, typically it doesn't come to life like a pinball machine does. That's right. right? So this is actually what you brought to show us today, and something you've been working on for over a year now. Yep, year and a half. Uh, is a way to light up the play field. So why don't we just turn it on for a few seconds and sure. show people what it looks like. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so basically I just took a bunch of LEDs and wired it up behind the play field, attached it all to an Arduino. And, um, and they're animated as if yep. this was still in the pinball machine. Right, and, and I, I gotta say, I am not a programmer. I worked with a programmer to do this. One of my friends did all the Arduino coding, and then I designed the, the circuit board and the, the wires and the lights and all that. You're a hardware dude. Yeah, I'm a hardware dude. So let, let's, let's bring the lights back on and show people the hardware behind this light up play field, because that's pretty incredible. And you designed this, Yeah. this arrangement. So let, let's, uh, let's tell the story of how this came to be, because you brought some other, some accessories. So basically, this is something that you worked on when you were starting this idea. Yeah, I mean, I thought, you know, people who run a pinball, they might like to have a miniature pinball play field hung up on the wall. Representative of maybe their favorite Right, yeah, game. but Attack from Mars is a pretty pop uh, popular game. Um, so I thought it would be pretty cool to, to light it up. So I, I basically, you know, found the artwork online. Mm -hmm. I had it laser, laser cut, cut out of yeah. a piece of wood from a site called Pinoco, which does, yep. you know, laser cutting services. And then um, the idea was, if you just put some LEDs behind the board that it would, you know, you'd be able to do these little chase patterns and, and attract sequences. And it's just a regular white LED, but the inserts are just gel color. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is just paper. This is, um, you know, really thick paper that kind of, that still, you know, it, it gives a good color if you shine white light through it. Not nearly as good as plastic. Right. But the problem with this is that there's so many licensing fees involved because, mm -hmm. you know, Williams Valley still owns the rights to Attack from Mars. You'd have to license that, find the people who own that. and So why not that. devise a system where people could light up? Any play field. Any play right. field they have. <laughs> right. That might be refurbished or yeah. might be you know decommissioned, and so tell me about the process. What is the hardware that goes into this? Uh, well, at the time, I I figured I w I couldn't do it because I 
cannot learn to program. I'm, I don't know what it is about my mind, but it, learning new languages, whether it's you know French or Spanish or C or whatever, forget it. I can't do it. So I happened to run into a friend of mine who's looking for an Arduino project, and he's a programmer. So I kind of pitched the idea. I said, I will do all the hardware if you just help me out with the coding. So got together with him, and he and I worked on breadboarding um, you know, this, what would become this circuit board. Ah, so it, it's Arduino based. It's, yeah, so we basically took an Arduino, uh, the CPU out of the Arduino, mm -hmm. which can still run Arduino code, and we plopped it on, into our breadboard, and then we started adding other components to it, including a matrix chip. So it's a custom PCB that y yeah. you wired and you designed. Right. And, and it uses a matrix chip so that only eight lights are actually technically on at on a time. time. Okay. So it uses really low power. It's like 230 milliamps. Let's show people what this final board looks like. Because I've seen your workshop, and you were you know, soldering on the board, and you bought an oscilloscope to, to, oh my to God. test out everything. And we knew nothing going into this. And this is, this is testament that anybody can join the maker movement, because we had never done a circuit board before. Right. We'd never done breadboarding. We'd never messed with Arduino. And uh, you taught yourself everything. Yeah. So you come up with this. But and so what, what are the components here? Um, well, here's the Arduino chip. This is the matrix chip. Mm -hmm. um, this here is our SD holder. That's where all the data is stored. So you you um, program the light sequences using a website, a web tool, and then you uh, hit the download button. It puts it on a little text file that you plop in here. Um, that's basically it. Everything else is just is RJ11 cables. It's phone cables. Yeah, phone cables with LEDs soldered to the end. It's and regular LEDs. It's the cheapest four conductor cable you can find, and so that was the solution. But it's also kind of cool because they're you know modular. You can pop yeah. them off. You, you don't need all the lights. You don't need to have them on the board. Wow. So you mentioned that there's a website that's pr programming yep. these sequences because you can't download it from the pinball machine. You kind of no. you mimic the that Arduino animation. Is, the Arduino is not pro uh, powerful enough to actually emulate the old pinball ROMs. You know, we're getting there. Um, I'd be surprised if the Raspberry Pi couldn't do that. But um, interpreting that data is not easy. Even if you can get access to the pinball ROM, you know, matrix light hardware or uh, software, it's really hard to interpret that. So we just basically made our own, and we started from scratch. And, and this is where you programmed a just, oh, like a web app. Yep. So you take a picture of the playfield, you upload it to the web tool, and then it will simulate the back of the playfield, so it'll flip it around for mm -hmm. you. And you drag your lights onto wherever you you put them, and then um, you, you click them on and off, and you create a play. You play, can create a light sequence and and just watch minutes. it. Yeah. So even if you don't own yeah. a physical playfield, you can experiment. On yeah. the site and just animate and have fun. We were really, really proud of the, of the web tool. We, we, I found a guy completely by luck um, by contacting him because I used an iPhone app that he wrote, and I said, "Do you do contract work for, um, you know, uh, high, you know, uh, interactive websites?" Mm -hmm. And he said, "Yeah, I do." And we talked it over, and he was wonderful working with the guys. Um, so it's just, it's just so easy as long as you can connect with people who can help you and do those things that you are incapable of. Um, and there's so many ways to learn to do everything else. So you're going to take this to pinball conventions and show it off, and and are, are, yeah, and you're selling this kit. People, yeah, if you own a pinball machine, you can actually have a light up play field. Yeah, even if you don't, even, even if you <laughs> don't. That's what I was saying. Like, this is so cool. I don't have a favorite pinball machine right now, yeah. but I want to get the kit. Just have it in reserve. Yep. And so if I, a pinball machine catches my eye in the future, I can put that up as a wall-mounted display. Yep. We just started selling them last week. We only made 100, because yeah. I don't know what the audience is like for this. Right. But so far, we're, we're doing really well. Um, so we're on track to sell out in a couple months. And um, we got ideas about you know how to improve it maybe for the future. And uh, it's, it's just been such a fun project. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Yep. This, this project is called Airfield. Airfield, yeah. Airfield, and it's a way to light up pinball play fields. I think this is something that anyone could appreciate, even if you're not a fan of pinball. Um, and that's something we know you I are. Hope so. All right, thank yeah. you so much. We'll have more with Jeremy uh, in the coming weeks on Tested. And I'm Norm. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.